Uh, I'll be taking requests down in the comments. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll make a deal with you guys. There was a film that came out back when I was a kid. I was about seven or eight when this movie came out. And it revolves around talking chihuahuas. If you can name that, that film in, in the comments, then I will do it uh, as the next episode of Movie Night with Zach. So if you can name that movie about the talking chihuahuas, it'll be the next Movie Night with Zach. So I doubt you guys will be, I, I doubt you guys know what I'm talking about, but just if you can. If you can think of it, I will do it. Promise you. But I don't think you guys will know what the fuck I'm talking about. But, uh... Sorry, I was just having a little glance at the screen. Uh, absolutely just filled with a dread for what what's about to come. And I guess really I have nobody to blame but myself for this episode of Movie Night with Zach because I made a dumb decision in actually assuming that none of you would know what I was talking about at the end of my Lords of Chaos Movie Night with Zach episode and leave it to Matt Carl who I honestly at this point believe I, I, I believe he just secretly despises me but leave it to him to know exactly what I'm talking about, that's right, today for Movie Night with Zach, we are, we are checking out Beverly Hills Chihuahua, and it just hurts to say that, because I hate Chihuahuas. Okay, I hate Chihuahuas, and by the rules of this franchise, or of this uh, series, there's three movies, there's three Beverly Hills Chihuahuas movies, and I have to cover now all three of them. And I'm just looking at this with just hatred right now. This, this this cast is not doing anything for me already. We have George Lopez, who I don't find funny at all. So red flag number one. We have Drew Barrymore, who I'm not a fan of. A lot of people like Drew Barrymore. I am not a fan of Drew Barrymore. There's red flag number two. Piper Parabo, I believe that's how you say that. I saw her in Looper, but I didn't think much of to her performance. She doesn't have anything to do, so I don't know. She's supposed to be the leading person, or the leading human in this movie. So that's, I guess, kind of a red flag, number three. But there is, hopefully, a saving grace here. Jamie Lee Curtis is in this movie. This just really... I'm dreading this, and I'm dreading the two films that come after this and like I said my rules that I said I have to do this so like, I, I have nobody to blame for this but myself so I guess we'll go ahead and just start watching Beverly Hills Chihuahua it still hurts to say that title this fucking chihuahua this white chihuahua played by Drew Barrymore is summing up everything I hate about chihuahuas. They're yappy, they're prissy. I really don't like this character. And Jamie Lee Curtis is just phoning in this performance, so this movie, as of right now, is looking like a lost cause. I will give the movie a positive here. George Lopez isn't overly annoying in this movie. His character is actually somewhat likable. But I hate this damn chihuahua, Chloe. I hate Chloe. I, I hate this spoiled little prissy chihuahua. I, just, I hate chihuahuas, man. And If every chihuahua was like George Lopez's chihuahua here, I would like chihuahuas. But I hate chihuahuas overall. And this movie just doesn't seem to be getting better at any point. Rachel, wake up. I've got a mani patty at 11, and you have to make my waffles. Get up! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you and your waffles, bitch. Whoa, 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 whoa. Plot hole. How did the dog press the button on the elevator? It's a little chihuahua we're talking about here. There's no fucking way that dog was able to reach that button. 
I mean, I guess I shouldn't expect anything less because this is a family film, but things like this I'm noticing. Oh! Bye bye, you little brat. <sighs> wait, wait, wait. So this Chihuahua has a trust fund? Okay. I'm going to have to, I guess, pretend that that makes just some modicum of sense. I was gonna say that this movie is starting to get kind of interesting in a way, but uh, I'm now being told that a Chihuahua has a trust fund. Okay. Suspension of disbelief only goes so far. Okay, as bad as dog fighting is, this is definitely a more sensationalist look at it, but uh, they have it all organized like it's the UFC, and I can't help but uh, kind of laugh at it. Okay, I'm not going to lie, this uh, Diablo dog is fucking badass, I'm not going to lie. They just had to, didn't they? They just had to. They just couldn't resist it. So these chihuahuas hate the purses, they hate the stupid hats, they hate being talked to like babies. And there is an entire civilization of chihuahuas like this. That's fucking badass, and I love that. <laughs> okay, that's gotta be the funniest scene in the movie. Uh, freaking George Lopez, Poppy, jumps out just bites the dude on the nose. Actually kind of funny, not gonna lie. Alright, that was uh, Beverly Hills Chihuahua. Let me... Shut that off. Okay, cool. Okay. So. I will say that the film itself wasn't unwatchable. It was actually rather watchable. But it was definitely made clear that I am not the target audience for this movie. But I do actually have a few positives. Is that I, I, I was really expecting this to be just a movie where I was I was envisioning that the writing process here would be just arbitrarily throwing together a movie about talking chihuahuas and have absolutely no redeemable redeemable qualities about it whatsoever, but uh there were actually some positives. And, well, one of the positives definitely being that there were actually a couple couple funny jokes that did get a, a laugh out of me. Uh, and two of them, there was about two, there was about three or four of them, and two of them featured George Lopez's character, Poppy, the brown chihuahua. And normally George Lopez, I, I can't stand, just I just can't stand the sight of George Lopez. It really helped that I wasn't looking into George Lopez's face throughout this entire movie and that his voice was hidden behind a chihuahua. Now, yeah, I do not, I have, don't like, I don't like chihuahuas that much, but uh, his character did, did not annoy me in the slightest. And another positive... Delgado, who I actually am not too sure who it was that voiced Delgado, was actually the best character in the film. He was the most developed character, and his char he actually had a, a good little character arc here in this movie. And I, I know it's, it's really weird for me to sit here and overanalyze a, a family film. But, uh, yeah, no, um, the character of Delgado was actually quite, uh, quite likable. And so were pretty much every character except Chloe, played by Drew Barrymore. Now, it really doesn't help that I don't like Drew Barrymore. I've just never, 
I know there's everybody loves Drew Barrymore. I've just never been a fan of Drew Barrymore. I've just never been a fan of her. I've never liked movies that she was in. Um, I just hated how annoying her character was throughout this film. Now, her character arc made sense. She goes from like this little prissy Beverly Hills chihuahua to she she learns how to be a dog essentially, but that definitely does uh come at the expense of my threshold of annoyance, uh which is not uh not very high. Uh her just <laughs> I'm just not, I just, I just don't feel like, uh, Drew Barrymore acted this role very well. Personally, I just didn't think Drew Barrymore was very good in this, so, uh, that's not unusual for me because I'm just not a fan of Drew Barrymore as it is, but, uh, yeah, um, the character of Chloe and Drew Barrymore's performance here is just not very good, and, well, for the short amount of time that Jamie Lee Curtis is in this movie... She, it's nice to see Jamie Lee Curtis in anything, because I do quite like Jamie Lee Curtis, but uh, she kind of phones it in here a little bit. It just This was obviously just a paycheck movie for her. But uh, a story here is basically uh, Chloe, get they go to Mexico and whatnot, because Piper Pebro's character, who is the niece of Jamie Lee Curtis's character, they go babysitting the dog and whatnot, and they go on this trip, and... Uh, Chloe is abducted by these group of people running a dog fighting promotion and where she meets Delgado and then they become friends and they have like this, they, ha they actually have this really badass fucking civilization of chihuahuas that hate, um, they, they hate, uh, the prissy hats and they hate, uh, the dresses and the baby talk and the being put in the handbags and whatnot, just all that stuff that really irritates me about chihuahuas. These chihuahuas fucking hate that bullshit, and I thought that that was one of the best parts in the movie. Just having this entire civilization of chihuahuas who have ran away from that bullshit. That was actually my favorite scene in the movie, because I thought that that was awesome. Um, but yeah, uh, the, I, the, like I said, this movie does have quite a few positives. But there are quite a few negative things I have to say as well. And I get that this is a kid's film, but there are plot holes and just things that leave me scratching my head throughout. Uh, so like I said, I'm obviously, this is, I wouldn't even say this is a family film. I'd say this is more of just a child, a child's film. And I, and I, and I tried to understand that while I was watching that this is a kid's film. And uh, it's a very competently made kid's film. It's uh, one that, your children, I think, could definitely be entertained by. But there are just plot holes through here that just, as an adult, I am a 22-year-old, I'm an adult, I uh, felt like, holy shit, I, I, can't, I can't look past that. There was also some really bad CGI in this movie. Some of it was actually good, but then others, like the scene, these scenes of, uh, of mountain lions that show up, these mountain lions look like shit. They're obviously, they're obviously CGI, and I understand it wouldn't be a good idea to get this little chihuahua in front of real mountain lions. I mean, we all know how that would probably, how that would probably turn out. Not, it wouldn't turn out in the chihuahua's favor. And I just, I, I, I got it, but I was like, man, you could have made these, you could have made these uh, mountain lions look a little bit, uh, a little bit better. So they looked kind of shitty. But there was also some good CGI in here as well. Um... Overall, could I recommend this movie? Yes, if you have a child that is maybe five, between the ages of five and eight. Yes, I can recommend this movie. If you're an adult and just looking for a movie to watch, I'd recommend probably skipping this one because this is just a very child-oriented film, but... As an adult, it was definitely a watchable film. It's one that I think the whole family could get some enjoyment out of. But this one is definitely more of the kids. You're going to sit your kids down in front of this movie and they're going to have a good time with it. So I can definitely recommend it for children. I don't have much hope going into Beverly Hills Chihuahua 2 and 3 though. Because those were actually straight to DVD 
sequels, and those about 10 times out of 10 fail miserably, so while this movie wasn't, it wasn't too bad, it was watchable, I have no hope for Beverly Hills Chihuahua 2 and 3, but uh, that's all the time I have for today, so what did you guys think of the video, what do you guys think of Beverly Hills Chihuahua, have you seen it, if you don't give a shit about it, I, I have to cover the next two, which I'm, I'm, I'm dreading it, because straight... A straight-to-DVD movie about chihuahuas is never going... It just does not sound appealing to me at all. But what do you guys think of the video? Did you guys like it? Did you guys hate it? Leave a thumbs up. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And I'm out. Peace.